Welcome back to question two of our series on falling body problems. In case you missed question number one, these are the types of questions that you are most likely required to know how to answer in a physics classroom. The question reads, a parachutist descending at a constant rate of 2.0 meters per second drops a smoke canister at a height of 300 meters. Find the time for the smoke canister to reach the ground and its velocity when it strikes the ground. Then find the time for the parachutist to reach the ground, the position of the parachutist when the smoke canister strikes the ground, and an expression for the distance between the smoke canister and the parachutist. Before we start, let's try to paint a picture of what's happening. So that is the parachute. And hanging from that parachute is this parachutist. 300 meters from the ground, the parachutist tosses a smoke canister. So let's make note of that. So that's ground right there. That's the ground. And that's 300 meters from the ground. They toss a smoke canister. Mind you that this parachutist is constantly going down at 2.0 meters per second at that velocity. What else do we know? So the initial initial height, which I'll denote as x, x sub 0 is 300. And obviously the final height, which I'll represent as x, is 0. That's when you hit the ground. The initial velocity is 2.0 meters per second. That's given in the question. But because we're taking into account direction, I'll make sure that velocity is written as negative 2.0 meters per second. But by all means, you could have left it as positive 2.0, but you would have to change these around. So this would have to be 0, and that would have to be 300 instead. And since we're taking into account the direction, the acceleration due to gravity will be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now let's make note of what they want us to answer. First and foremost, we need to find the time for the smoke canister to reach the ground and its velocity when it strikes the ground. Furthermore, they want us to find the time of the parachutist to reach the ground, the position of the parachutist, and the expression of the distance between the smoke canister and the parachutist. Of these formulas, we can actually use this one to help us find the time that it takes the canister to reach the ground. The canister will have the same initial velocity as the parachutist at 300 meters. So that is the same for the parachutist and the canister. I'll use this formula. I have 0 minus 300 is equal to the initial velocity of the canister multiplied to the time which we don't know plus half times the acceleration. So half of negative 9.8 is negative 4.9 t squared. Just cleaning this up, we get negative 300 is equal to negative 2.0 t minus 4.9 t squared. We have a quadratic equation here because the highest degree is of power of 2. So I will bring this term over and I end up with 0 is equal to negative 4.9 t squared minus 2.0 t plus 300. Mind you, I could multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1 right now in case you don't want to work with a leading coefficient that's negative. But just keep it this way. And rather than using the quadratic formula, I'll just use a function that's already installed on my calculator. So I'll write down negative 4.9 negative 2.0 and 300. I end up with two values of t, one being 7.6, two, so I'll write down t is equal to 7.6 seconds, and the other t, because it is a quadratic, you should get up to two solutions, is negative 8.03. We can't have negative time, so we will not be using this. Therefore, the time it takes the canister to reach the ground is 7.6 seconds. Now, this is a really good thing for us because we can now find other information that we need. For example, we can use this now to find the velocity when the canister strikes the ground. This part right here, which I did not highlight, but I am now. So the velocity, which I'll just represent as V, the final velocity, is what we're looking for next. And 
what we can use is this formula right here. So I have the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity of negative 2.0 plus the acceleration that was negative 9.8 and the time. Now we wrote down that the time is 7.6 but when you're doing your calculations make sure you don't round midway in the process. So 7.623, keep a few decimal places. 7.623. Using our calculator we have negative 2 plus negative 9.8 times 7.623 and the final velocity is negative 76.7 that rounds to negative 77 meters per second so the final velocity is negative 77 meters per second remember this negative takes into account the direction but by all means you could have made it positive from the beginning and changed these up and it would have been a positive value. Given what we just learned, you can actually find the time of the parachutist quite easily. Remember, the parachutist is 300 meters from the ground and they are going at a constant speed. So if I write down 300 meters and I multiply that by this number, except I write down one second in the numerator position and 2.0 meters in the denominator position. Remember, speed is a rate, okay? And rates can be switched. It doesn't have to be meters at the top and seconds at the bottom. You can switch them. So if I multiply these out, you actually end up with the time that it takes the parachutist. So 300 divided by 2. It takes this parachutist 150 seconds to reach the ground. Compare that to the canister, which is 7.6 seconds, a big difference. So we just found the time, the position of the parachutist when the smoke canister strikes the ground. Now the smoke canister strikes the ground at 7.6 seconds. So if I take 7.6 seconds and multiply it by the rate at which the parachutist is falling down, remember the rate is 2.0 meters per second, you can actually find out how far the parachutist is from that 300 meter mark by calculating this. So the seconds cancel out, we take 7.6 and remember it's always better to use the non-rounded version but because the difference is so small, let's just use it for simplicity's sake, we end up with 15.2 meters. So after 7.6 seconds, this parachutist is only 15.2 meters from 300. Therefore, we should technically subtract these and you get 284.8 meters. And of course, for simplicity, we can round this to 285 meters. And that last part is write an expression for the distance between the smoke canister and the parachutist. I'm going to call the final distance for the smoke canister as x sub c for canister and the final distance for the parachutist as x sub p. And by subtracting these we actually get the difference between the smoke canister and the parachutist. So if you take a look at this one specifically, what we can do is isolate for the variable x, which represents the final distance that the object has fallen, and subtract that expression by an expression that represents the distance of the parachutist. So I will isolate for x here, I end up with x or x final is equal to everything on the right side. So let me just rewrite that and remember we're taking that over. We have positive now x initial. Let's fill these in. So the initial velocity for the canister was negative 2.0 times t plus half times negative 9.8 that is negative 4.9 t squared plus 300. 
we need to subtract this expression by an expression that represents the final distance of the parachutist. Now remember the parachutist was descending at a constant rate. So there's no acceleration involved. And the distance at which the parachutist has fallen relative to the speed that they're descending and from where they started can be calculated by taking x is equal to 300, which was the initial distance from the ground, minus the speed at which they were following, which is again in meters per second, and that multiplied by the time, whatever the time is. Remember, we're looking for a generic expression here where we can plug something in for t and find the difference between the two. And of course, you don't need to include meters per second into the formula, but I'm just showing you, okay, for visual sake. If I subtract this red equation from this orange equation, look what happens. So remember, I have xc minus x sub p, negative 2.0t minus negative 4.9t squared plus 300 minus, and this part now, 300 minus 2.0t, simplifying, multiplying this negative into the expression on its right, we get negative 2.0t minus 4.9t squared, and then if you multiply this negative into 300, you get 300 minus 300, which means that they cancel out, and negative times negative 2.0t is positive 2.0t, these two terms now cancel out, leaving you with this expression, negative 4.9t squared. So substituting any value in for t, of course, between 0 and 150 seconds, should tell you the difference between the two objects, the parachutist and the canister. And so there you have it. That is our second question on falling body problems. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below or use our website shown on your screen. Talk to you later.